Hey, I'm Melissa. Modesty is one of those things everybody has an opinion about. How short is too short? How low cut is too low cut? Today, let's talk about how the Bible defines modesty. Maybe you have your own modesty standards, or maybe your parents do. Maybe you honestly don't know what your standards look like. Thankfully, the Bible gives us some great principles to help us figure out what to do when it comes to choosing what we wear. First, let's get this right out there. Biblical modesty actually has nothing to do with clothes. That's right. Let me repeat that. Modesty has nothing to do with clothes. So what do we mean when we're talking about modesty? When the Bible speaks of modesty, it's referring to an attitude of the heart. The biblical attitude of modesty goes deeper than just a person's choice in clothes. While some may jump at the chance to hold a ruler up to a girl's knee in order to persecute the length of her skirt or get on a guy's case for taking off a shirt on a hot day, it's the heart God is looking at, not how much skin is showing that truly defines our modesty. Modesty is born from the heart's motivation and intention and whether the person is trying to get attention. The Bible tells us that when we draw attention to ourselves, that's a problem. When the Apostle Paul talks about how women should dress in church, he says that they should dress modestly, with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Just to clarify here, Paul is not saying that wearing braids, jewelry, or nice clothes is sinful. What he's saying is that it's wrong to use those things in order to get attention. That principle is valid for all humans, by the way. Dressing with the intention to turn heads is the wrong motivation for wanting to look good. A bikini is not automatically immodest. Runner shorts and a tank top are not automatically immodest. Immodesty is born from a desire to get attention. So if we're dressing with the intention to fish for compliments, or if we want people to notice how muscular we are, then we've sinned in pride and coveting a form of sexualized attention from onlookers. On the other hand, if we're choosing swimwear based on the fact that it's 105 degrees outside and we're more comfortable that way, then that is perfectly fine. Dressing for comfort is not a sin. Let me add a quick caveat though. We're not saying that just because you feel more comfortable walking around in your underwear that you should do so in public. There are generally laws about that kind of thing and God commands us to obey our governmental authorities. We need to maintain a godly perspective on how we present ourselves to the world, glorify God with our bodies, and care about the spiritual state of others. That leads us to the next question that comes up in the modesty discussion. How can I stop someone from looking lustfully at me? The short answer is, you can't. As much as we'd love to, we have no control over another person's thoughts or actions. The only person we have any chance of controlling is ourselves. Christian culture gives women a lot of flack about causing your brother in Christ to stumble by wearing any clothes that show off curves or makes her seem sexually appealing in any way. Even if she has no intention of trying to get attention, we want to stop that way of thinking right now. Everybody is responsible for the direction of their own eyeballs and thoughts. If someone chooses to look lustfully at another person, it's the onlooker's sin that defiles the sexual purity of their mind. The object of that lust, whether it's you, a girl on the beach, a man in a magazine, the porn industry, whatever, is not choosing sin for the onlooker. Someone else's choice to sin is not your responsibility. We can't make someone sin. Each of us chooses to sin or not to sin on our own. The responsibility lies separately within each person. We can choose not to look at a person lustfully, just as we can choose not to dress in order to get attention. We can't control what other people do, but we can control ourselves. When faced with the question, should I wear this? Remember that modesty is a matter of the heart. Are you trying to get attention or are you dressing for your own comfort and confidence? And remember, don't guilt yourself into worrying about unintentionally making someone think lustful thoughts. You cannot control their thoughts. Just be wise in your style choices, always keeping in mind that you represent Christ on earth. We hope we've given you a new biblical perspective on modesty. Was this a new take on modesty for you? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We answer questions like this every day, so visit fort12teens.org to ask your own spiritual questions.